majesty with glorious and absolute power. God is the most high God. From everlasting to everlasting. We've read it already in Psalm 92 verse 8. Thou Lord art the most high forevermore. What Nebuchadnezzar just discovered, the greatness and the supremacy of God, which he had just known, had been the firm and the thorough conviction of God's people since the beginning of the world. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 86, verses 8 and 10. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Thou, for thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. The psalmist said in Psalm 95 verse 3, For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In Psalm 96 verses 4 and 5, it says, For, for, the, Lord, for, for the Lord is a great, is great, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Psalm 135 verse 5, For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Psalm 145 verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. You need to feel it. You need to know it. You need to sense it. You need to understand that, that whatever problem you have, whatever mountain you have, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. God rules over all and is to be to be worshipped by all because he's exalted above all and over all the universe. He is, the, is supreme over all people, over all nations, over all things. The God of heaven, the ruler of the universe, who occupies the throne of glory, having all others beneath him and having an everlasting dominion, he must be worshipped as the only true God and the living God where we're worshipping. In First Chronicles chapter 16, First Chronicles chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 25, First Chronicles chapter 16, looking at it from verse 25. Yeah, it tells us very clearly, for great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of, of holiness. We have seen today that God eventually conquered the will of Nebuchadnezzar, crushed the mind, the will of Nebuchadnezzar. And all the people that are resisting God, that's how God eventually will crush their will. But we are not resisting God. We are submitting to God because He is our Father. He is our Creator. He is our Redeemer. And He is the solver of all our problems. Our enemies shall be ashamed, but we will stand and we're going to enjoy the promises of the Lord in Jesus' name. Everywhere we go and every challenge we have, we're going to discover the greatness of our God and the incomparability of our God. You can taste that part tonight. I said you can taste that part tonight. You stand up and glorify the name of the Lord and worship this great and majestic God is great in power, is great in majesty. And we know that there is no God like Him. The gods of this world are impotent. Throw to worship the Almighty God, and you want to put your strength, you want to put your confidence, you want to put your faith in the Almighty God and say, God.